In today's lockdown project, I'm going to show you how to make your own 6S lithium iron 3400 milliamp hour battery pack. I've got a bunch of these NCR 16850B cells and I'll be making this awesome 6S battery pack for long duration quads. Welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. I've got six of these NCR 16850B lithium ion cells from an old project. They're 3400 milliamp per hour and they're very energy dense. You're not going to get 95C type performance from these, but they're great for long range and duration quads. So I'm going to make a 6S pack out of these. This is how I'll be wiring up. The positive and negative go out to the XT60. And these are the links and the balance leads to the JST connector. We've got positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, and finally negative. And what I'm going to do is solder this wired XT60 across the first and the last negative and positive terminals to get a nominal 22 volts. I've cut some copper strips to connect the batteries. I find this easier to solder than wire and the technique I use to solder these means the batteries don't get too hot and possibly damaged. Spot welding is an option but not many have got the facilities. So I've got five of these which I've cut from an old computer power supply casing, but you can just use wire if you need to. So we've got negative to positive, negative to positive, negative to positive, negative to positive, and finally negative to positive. And remember, only do this if you're 100% confident of what you're doing. So this is the balance lead, seven wires that are soldered to each of the cells. Here, 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 and here, oops. I'll leave a link in the description where you can get hold of it. And I've got various bits of neoprene and polyprop to protect the terminals and the soldering. And it makes the finished pack neat and tidy. I've laser cut these, but you can cut them with scissors. Now to make a start, just lightly roughen up the ends of each cell with some wet and dry. You need to gently rough it up a bit to give the solder something to adhere to and it basically cleans it up a bit. And I find it's good to keep the positive and negative marks and the batteries in place so you don't lose track and don't make a mistake. Take it slow and double check your work as you go along. To make life easier, I temporarily fix these to a piece of card just to hold them in place while I'm doing the initial soldering. So now I'm going to tin the tops of the batteries. I set my iron to about 400 degrees C. You don't need any extra flux in these. But before you start, always wear safety glasses when you're soldering batteries. All you need is a blob of melted solder to bridge a couple of connections and you've got red hot solder flying all over the place. Get some of that in your eye and it will ruin your day. So you've been warned. You don't want to hold the iron on the battery for too long because it may cause some heat damage. And you don't really need great blobs of solder for this. When you've done all six, you can just turn it over and do the other side. Now I need to solder these two strips on. I like using these copper connections because it keeps the battery ends really tidy and flat. You just need a little bit of solder on the end to tin them. Okay, so that's going to go across there, like that. This technique is almost like spot welding and you don't need to hold the iron on for too long and the resulting connection is mechanically very strong. Just hold the strip down, apply a bit of heat, you'll see when it goes, there we go. Hold it for a second to let it cool, then you can do the other side. 
we'll clean up that bit of mess that's on there afterwards. Perfect. And just give the batteries a bit of a tug just to make sure it's secure. Okay, so that's the first two done. And you can just turn it over and keep double and triple checking that you've got it right. And that's why I keep these pen marks on the bench like this. Same process again, just tin the strips with a little bit of solder. So next I'm going to wire up the XT60. So just strip and tin the ends of the wires. And then you can solder them between the negative and the positive. Again, just double and triple check that you've got this the right way around. Now, as a check, you can use a multimeter to confirm you've got the full voltage between the battery ends. So this is, let's see, make the connection, 20.8 volts, which is about right, but obviously these cells need a full balance charge. I'm just going to wrap this up nice and secure with some more cap on tape. Next, I'm gonna solder the balance leads in place. I like to have a loose zip tie around the wires to keep things nice and tidy while I'm soldering. Just check the lengths carefully so you get nice neat wiring. So here's the balance lead connected here, 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 and here. And make sure the wiring is all nice and neat. And then you can secure it in place with some more cap on tape. So before we go any further, let's just check the cell voltages are correct. So what have we got here? 4 4.07, 4.18, 4.08, 4.2, 4.08, and 4.2. Excellent, they're all about right, but obviously the pack needs a good balance charge. Next, I'm going to add a bit of mechanical protection to the top and the bottom of the pack. I've got some neoprene that I've laser cut, but you can just cut these with some scissors. And this is a piece of laser cut Dalron, but you could just as easily use some plastic from ice cream carton container, anything you like. Just a bit of mechanical protection for the solder joints in case of side impact. So you can just strap this all up with a bit of insulating tape to keep it secure. And I've cut another piece of neoprene to wrap around the whole pack, which is just a bit more mechanical protection. And it provides some strain relief for the wires.
This is some 105 millimeter, 0.15 millimeter thick PVC heat shrink. Just cut it to length. It just needs to be slightly bigger than the pack. Push the pack into the heat shrink. It's a bit of a fiddle, but it's okay. And then you can shrink it to place with a hot air gun. Just take your time, don't use too much heat on this. And I find it's generally best to work from the middle outwards. Finally, I've added a custom label just to make it look pretty. So, there we go, one rather nice lithium iron 6S 22 volt 3400 milliamp hour battery pack. For charging, if you've got a 3.7 lithium ion profile in your charger, just use that. But these have an end charge of 4.2 volts, so you can just use a LiPo setting. But the spec for the NCR 16850s recommends a charge current of 1.6 amps. That's how I charge these, and I haven't had any problems. Now remember, if you decide to build one of these, it's at your own risk, and you need to be 100% confident of what you're doing. In the next video, I'll show you what I use these for and why I think they're so good for long range quads. As always, thanks for watching. And if you found that useful, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. And if it's your first visit, please do the subscribey belly thing up here to get notified when I post a new video. I'll see you next time. Searching for Turn Keys into every door